It's not easy to run a country, but the perks are stupendous. The money is great, security is top-notch, a dedicated staff tends to your every need, and thanks to healthy pensions and lifelong benefits, it's almost always the last job you'll need. Some world leaders, of course, are richer than others. Many are multimillionaires, and some even billionaires. Here now are the 10 richest leaders in the world. All are currently in office, and due to the secrecy level in some of these nations, exact wealth amounts may be estimated at best. One thing's for certain, however, they're all way more rich and powerful than you and I will likely ever be. The King of Morocco, Mohammed VI, is like Panera in that he was a successful businessman and banker before assuming the throne in 1999. His net worth around $2.5 billion is also comparable to Panera's. That, however, is where the similarities end. The richest monarch in Africa by a wide margin, Mohammed VI makes much of his money through business and banking. He runs a large investment holding company which is worth over $10 billion. However, unlike Panera, Mohammed has taken no steps to remove himself from his business. When you're an absolute monarch, clearly you don't have to. King Mohammed also differs from Panera in how he shows off his wealth. Panera doesn't flaunt his riches much, but Mohammed certainly does. Forbes estimates the royal palace spends $960,000 a day to stay operational. But it's not just maintenance and personnel. In fact, much of that money goes to upkeep of the king's clothing and his line of cars. That much money, which equals $350 million per year, doesn't come entirely from the king's pockets, of course. Much of it comes from the Moroccan budget, so essentially the country's citizens pay for it. But really, what better way to showcase how impossibly rich you are than to show off using other people's money? The president of Chile, Sebastián Piñera, is in many ways that country's Donald Trump. Before entering politics, he was a successful businessman, owning various ventures like LAN Airlines, the television station Chilevision, the private hospital Clinica Las Condes, and Blanco y Negro, the company that owns popular football club Colo Colo. In addition, he founded the credit card giant Boncard in 1976, meaning he was already plenty rich before the presidency came calling. Once he became president in 2010, Pinero sold off stakes in these companies, both to remove any possible conflicts of interest and to make wads of cash. He sold his part of Land Airlines for $1.5 billion, made $150 million for selling his share of Chile Vision, and sold his share of Clinica Las Condes for around $38 million. With all that, Pinera can currently boast a personal fortune of $2.8 billion. Interestingly, while Pinera is in his second term as president, they have not been consecutive. He was president from 2010 to 2014, took four years off, then won re-election in 2018. Clearly, Chilean voters have no issue with the billionaire in charge. Whether that stays the case, should he become richer and should regular citizens stagnate, only time will tell. You may not think Liechtenstein could possibly have much money. It's one of the tiniest countries on Earth, fifth as large as New York City. And yet its crown prince, Hans Otto II, isn't just the richest person in the country, he's the richest monarch in all of Europe. With a net worth of around $3 billion, he could buy and sell the Queen of England five times over. Hans Otto is the definition of coming from old money. His royal bloodline is over 900 years old, and they've been accumulating wealth the entire time. Back in the day, his family controlled tons of land, but now he and his kin make their money through banking. Called LGT Group, the private bank he owns caters mostly to his fellow billionaires, which would obviously bring in big bucks to the guy in charge. On top of that, up until 2009, Liechtenstein was famously known as a tax haven for the filthy rich who wanted to avoid paying their fair share. The country has since made its banking practices less secretive, but there's no way Hans Otto didn't profit mightily up until then. The prince doesn't display his wealth in many extravagant ways, aside from his massive art collection. He currently owns around 140 priceless paintings from masters like Rembrandt and Rubens and displays them at the Liechtenstein Museum, which he and his family just happen to own. It appears being rich is the quickest route to cutting out the middleman there is. United States President Donald Trump is a rich man and wants you to know it. Between his penchant for private jets, expensive suites, and gold-tinted everything, there's no mistaking Trump for a common thousandaire. However, he might not be worth quite as much as he'd like people to believe. During his campaign, Trump claimed he was worth around $10 billion. His financial statements, however, have shown that not to be the case. More likely, he's worth around $3.1 billion, a significant drop from the $4.5 billion he was worth in 2017. Whatever the case, he's still one of the richest people on the planet, due largely to his real estate holdings in New York City. 
He's also made hundreds of millions of dollars in real estate outside the Big Apple, and his branded clubs and golf courses bring in another high nine figures. Time will tell if he can hold on to that money. As Forbes magazine pointed out, an across-the-board drop in real estate values combined with Trump's polarizing, some might say alienating, style of government could cause the president's net worth to dip even further. Don't expect the Donald to enter the poorhouse anytime soon, however. Even $1 billion is more money most people could possibly spend or lose in a lifetime. Virtually everything about Kim Jong-un remains a secret, including exactly how much money he has. We know only that he has a lot of it, and that he loves to show the world that he is, in fact, extremely rich. Estimates peg the North Korean dictator with a $5 billion net worth, though he could be worth as much as $8 billion. Much of that money is stashed around the world in secret bank accounts, befitting such a mysterious regime. They need to keep that money hidden because chances are that much of it was obtained illegally. Outside of China, few countries will trade with North Korea, as long as the Kim dynasty remains in power. And so, according to experts like the Congressional Research Service, Jong Un likely makes his money through illegal weapons deals, drug dealing, counterfeiting, human trafficking, slavery, animal trafficking, and cyber hacking. In addition, the man has absolute power in a nation where virtually everyone who isn't him is broke and starving. Most North Koreans earn anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 US dollars per year. It's easy to make money when you hoard essentially all of your nation's resources. Yet, for such a mysterious figure, Jong Un's pretty open about how he spends his money. He has a large yacht, expensive car multiple homes, and his own private movie theater. He regularly imports fine cheese and wine, and spends six figures on alcohol every year. Then, of course, there's his enormous supply of weaponry, such as nukes and heavy artillery. He spends good money stockpiling these just in case international war or a violent peasant revolution comes knocking at his expensive gold-plated door. Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum wears many hats, all of which are extremely expensive. He's both Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE, as well as Dubai's Constitutional King. As such, very little has stopped him from amassing an amazing $18 billion in wealth. He made his money by working to turn Dubai from a sparsely populated desert hub into one of the world's richest, most advanced, most tourist-happy cities in roughly 10 years. That plus the many business investments undertaken by his company, Dubai Holding, has made him wealthy on a level few can even imagine themselves achieving. Like Bin Zayed, Bin Rashid displays his wealth in an almost obnoxious, showy way. He too owns a super yacht though his is only a mere 531 feet long. He owns a penthouse suite in Monaco valued at $300 million. He has his own insane car collection, which isn't as gargantuan as the Sultan of Brunei, but is still plenty sizable. He collects Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Rolls Royces, and other exotic cars, and his collection is valued at around $100 million. Bin Rashad is so rich he can afford to spend a fortune on things that to him are entirely useless. For example, he once spent $92 million to buy an entire golf course. He doesn't actually play golf. He likely just bought it for his buddies, and to remind us all that he can. There seems to be something about Middle Eastern leaders that brings out not just immense wealth, but a desire to display said wealth. Take United Arab Emirates President Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nayyan, who's worth anywhere from 18 to 23 billion dollars, and wants you to know it. Bin Zayed owns not just a super yacht, but the super yacht. Dubbed Azam, this ship of ships runs almost 600 feet long. Imagine two football fields next to each other. That's his yacht, and unsurprisingly, it's worth well over 400 million dollars. He displays his wealth in other ways, too, like holding a wedding for his daughter, which featured a flowery, 20-foot-tall wedding cake slowly lowered from the ceiling, like an offering from the gods. Nobody really knows the price tag of this wedding, but no way was it anything less than obscene. Bin Zayed's personal wealth is amazing enough, but you can't discount the rest of his family. Estimates place the combined wealth of the Amnayan family at a mind-boggling $150 billion. Clearly, when you control nearly 100 billion barrels of oil reserves, your bank account is never light. Hassan al Bokaya has been the Sultan of Brunei for over 50 years, but he's most known for being filthy rich. He's been worth around 20 billion for years, and has no problem showing off his wealth in the most extravagant of fashions. The Sultan's private residence, the Astana Nurul Iman, is the single largest palace in the world. It's over 2 million square feet in size, features 1,788 rooms and 257 bathrooms, and is worth well over $400 million. The Pope's palace looks like a humble cottage in comparison. In addition, the Sultan has his own private 747 jet and a car collection to make any auto buff jealous. By some estimates, he owns over 7,000 cars, with an estimated value of anywhere between $789 million and $4 billion. As part of that collection, the Sultan holds the Guinness World Record for owning the most Rolls Royces. 
He owns at least 500 of them, as he and his family purchased roughly half of all Rolls Royces sold during the 90s. Rounding out his collection are rare Lamborghinis, Porsches, Ferraris, Mercedes, and the Formula One cars driven by every F1 champion since 1980. It appears living humbly is no option for this man. In 2016, Maha Bajiran Longkorn became king of Thailand, following the death of his father. Almost immediately, he did what many would likely do with absolute power. He changed the rules so suddenly he was a multi-billionaire. Since 1938, Thailand's considerable royal assets were under control of the Crown Property Bureau, which the king had little to do with. Bajira Longkorn changed that, arranging it so he was now in charge of the CPB. What's more, the assets within were now considered equal to the king's personal assets, and he would be responsible for managing both. Just like that, the king of Thailand was worth an incredible $30 billion. While it's true making these assets personal property means they will now be taxed, that doesn't take away that Bajira Longkorn became one of the richest people on earth entirely by willing it to be so. You can see this considerable wealth simply by watching the king in action. Surrounded by gold-colored and gold-plated everything, while sitting on a golden crown and wearing an impeccable golden-white uniform, King Vizier Longcord comes across as a guy who isn't just suddenly rich, but extremely interested in everyone knowing it. It's not surprising that Vladimir Putin, a dictator in all but name, is filthy rich. It's also not surprising that we can't put an exact value on such a secretive ruler. He's almost certainly the richest world leader, but we don't really know by how much. Depending on who you talk to, the president of Russia is worth anywhere from a few hundred thousand dollars to a record-setting 200 billion. Meeting somewhere in the middle, as the Bureau of Investigative Journalism did, pegs Putin with a 70 billion dollar fortune. Even that amount would make him way richer than any other world leader, and richer than all but a few people on Earth. According to official Russian documents, Putin makes a mere $186,000 per year. That said, he's been seen wearing watches and other jewelry valued at hundreds of thousands of dollars. He's even been observed handing out said jewelry as gifts, which somebody making those six figures certainly couldn't do. It's very likely, due to having stakes in tons of successful Russian companies, he's worth way more than the Kremlin wants to acknowledge. In 2017, the CEO of Hermitage Capital Management, Bill Browder, estimated Putin is worth roughly $200 billion, more than even uber-rich Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos. Hermitage was once the largest portfolio investor in all of Russia, so chances are he knows what he's talking about. Putin very colorfully denies all this. As he told the Associated Press, it's just chit-chat, nonsense. They pick it out of their noses and smeared it onto their pieces of paper. Maybe Putin can add to his income by becoming an insult comic after he leaves office.